as you can see, I'm not in my office. I'm actually in my basement. Yes, it looks a little scary down here. It's not finished. But I'm in my basement for a very special reason. I'm in my basement because I'm building a new server rack. Hold, wait, <laughs> hold on a second. This isn't techno dim enough. That's a little better. So the rack I currently have is a SysRax 18U open frame rack. It's great, I couldn't ask for a better rack. I'm running out of space really quickly, and right now I can't even move servers into that rack. They're on my workbench. So I decided to set out and look for a new rack. I don't have enough room for a full 42U rack, and I wanna be able to build the rack and move the rack into my server room without taking it apart. And getting something very specialized like this on the secondhand market is a challenge. On the second hand market, you pretty much have to take whatever people are selling. And if you have room for a 42U rack, that's great. You can put it in the space you have. But I don't have room for that rack. While looking for a new rack, SysRacks and I connected and they reached out and said they wanted to send me a server rack for me to review. And it just so happens, one of their server racks was on my list. So this was perfect. So I decided to go with one of their 32U server racks and this server rack is awesome. It's a 19 inch standard server rack, which is about 66 inches tall, 24 inches wide, and about 35 inches deep. And I chose one with the glass door to help mitigate sound. Not that my servers are that loud, but I opted for an enclosed server with a glass door so that I can kind of keep sound levels to a minimum. And it also comes with an air control system that allows me to adjust the fans according to the temperature of the server. And if I decide not to turn on the fans, it has perforated edges on the door to help cool it off and passively pull in that cool air from my servers and pump it out through the back. It also comes with casters on the bottom so I can roll it around so I can push it from in here into my server room. And it's all solid metal with a powder coat finish. And I actually opted for gray. I think the gray looks really nice and it'll look nice in my white server room. And they also claim it's really easy to assemble, that it only takes one person. And I don't see anyone else here, so it's gonna be just me. So let's see how easy it is to assemble this server rack right after a message from our sponsor, Micro Center. If you're thinking of building a new PC, you should look no further than Micro Center. If you've never been to a Micro Center, you're missing out on seeing a huge selection of technology in person. They've got everything for custom PC builders from SSDs to hard drives, to power supplies, to memory, to air and water cooling, to motherboards, to video cards, to processors, and more. It's your one-stop shop to totally customize your next PC build. Micro Center has the best selection and prices whether you visit one of their 25 locations across the US or if you decide to shop online. Also, Micro Center's Black Friday starts now. Micro Center is helping you beat the lines with their Black Friday sales event going on now through November 27th. Check out their amazing deals in store from CPU and motherboard bundles to desktops and laptops and more. Like this Intel Core i7-13700K Raptor Lake CPU for $120 off. Or this Samsung 980 NVMe SSD for only 99 bucks. You won't see in-store exclusives like this anywhere else. So head down to your nearest Micro Center to get your deals today. Also, Micro Center is giving away a free SSD to all new customers, no purchase necessary, in-store only. So be sure to see the link in the description for details. Okay, let's put this thing together. I know you're gonna make fun of me for reading the instructions, but this is a server rack and I don't wanna mess it up. Step one, building the mainframe. One thing I didn't mention is that everything was boxed so nicely. I can't believe all of this fit inside about four or five packages. So in step one, that was really all about building the mainframe. It was building the frame that would hold the server together. The important piece here was just to make sure that the brush cable entries were at the bottom and facing the right way. These things are really sturdy and really solid and you don't wanna drop one on your foot. You should probably wear steel toe shoes, but I'm okay. So after I had the frame assembled, I had to line it up with the bottom piece to make sure that everything's pointing the right way and so far so good. So <laughs> I got a little warm, so I had to take off the hat. I sweat even when putting Ikea furniture together, so it's no surprise I'm breaking a sweat putting a server rack together. Anyway, so step two is probably the easiest step that there is. It's attaching these casters and these adjustable legs to the bottom piece. Now, these casters are super heavy duty and should do the job just fine. I think in the future I might look for taller casters for me, mainly because I want my robot vacuum to go underneath the server. I know, totally weird, but I do have a robot vacuum and it needs a clearance that's a little bit higher than this to get under. 
Nothing wrong with these wheels, they're great, but I might look for taller ones, maybe four or five inches, but it's just me. So, uh, it's not really looking like a server rack, but getting close. So casters are on, now it's time to assemble the whole entire frame and get it on this bed. And part of that includes attaching this air control unit. So this air control unit goes on the top, has a bunch of ventilation, and then on the inside, it has temperature probes along with a bunch of fans. And I have an LCD readout right here of the temperature. So this will go on top. So let's get it together. Step three was really just attaching the frame to the bottom as well as to the top. And the top is really awesome because it includes this air control unit. Super stoked about this and can't wait to pump some heat out of the rack. So this is step four. This is all about making sure that this is pretty secure. Now it's secure as it is, but it would be more secure if we attach these stabilizers or this frame to keep it from wobbling a little bit. Now, like I mentioned, it's pretty secure, but if you load this up with servers and you push it from the top, you might strain the frame a little bit. So that's why we're gonna attach these support beams in the, here in the middle. So what I'm doing here now is attaching these side panels, which also act as support beams for each side. This gives it some additional support when I push it around. So now it's time to attach these brackets here to the top. I'm not really sure what they'll be used for, but we'll find out here in a little bit. So I installed the horizontal mounting rails. This was actually really easy because all of these rails had a little lip that inserted into the slot, which held it in place. So then I could screw everything in. So now it's time to install these U-mount rails so that we can put servers in and lock them in right here. So this was pretty easy. This was just installing these U-mark vertical mounting rails so that I can actually install servers. Now each of these side panels has a lock and it has a key and you can lock them if you like. Now I don't need to lock mine at home, but if you run a small business or an enterprise, it's super nice to be able to lock these so that no one gets inside of them and does anything wrong or bad. Now it's time to install the doors. This is the back door and I'll have the front door here in a second. So I got the back door on and now I got the front door on. It's really looking like a server rack now. So now it's time for more locks, a lock on the front and a lock on the back. Installing the door handles was pretty easy except for I installed one backwards. So it took me a little bit of time to figure it out and get it working, but it's all good now, works and I can lock it up. Check out this rack. This is super duper nice. So this is a Sysrax 32U rack. It's got this nice glass door and these perforated holes to bring in air passively through all the servers. And here is the rack. You can see it goes from one all the way up to 32. And right here we have a temperature panel that I'll hook up here in a second. And if you see these hanging down, these are little temperature monitors. Now you could put this on the output of one of your servers or you can just dangle it here or attach it to something within your server to get the temperature and then kick on the fans that are right up there. There are the fans. Awesome. And those fans will blow the air right out here, out the top which is pretty sweet. Coming over here, we have this nice Sysrax logo. These door panels come out and there are two door panels per side and they actually lock. And the same goes with this door. This door can actually lock too. I probably won't lock it, but you can see it. And then more side panels over here. So two more side panels that you can open up. Sysrax logo there. And it also came with this PDU that I haven't mounted yet because I'm not sure where I'm gonna mount it. Not sure if I'm gonna mount it at the top or the bottom because I have something else coming. <laughs> Some additional UPSs and smart switches and stuff like that that I'm gonna hook up. So I'm not sure where this is gonna go yet, but after I figure that out, I'll, I'll put it in. But it came with a PDU, pretty awesome because those things aren't cheap. So this server rack to me just screams quality. It's super well made engineered well, very sturdy, and it actually <laughs> didn't take that long to put together, all things considered. But I bet you wanna hear those fans in there. Let's, let's check those out. Okay, so I just powered this on, and you can see the temperature in here, that's 64 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 Celsius. So for me, that's pretty nice, and you can see that I was sweating, even though it's not that hot down here, it's a Minnesota basement, but whatever. But we can set the clock if we like, 
we can set the temperature for when it should kick on. And let's set it, let's go down. Say when it reaches 64, they should turn on. Or 63. There we go. So I just told it to turn on. So there we go, it just kicked on. So I told it to kick on when it hits 63 degrees and it's 64 in here now. And yeah, that's, that's kicking out some air. That is awesome. Let's take a look here. So yeah, these are just pulling air right out. They're not even that loud either. So this is pretty awesome. So I can close this up, get a good seal on it and have all the air blow out here. So pretty cool. So let's say, let's change this, temp set. Let's go up to 64, which it should be at now. And there it goes. So what do I think of this server rack? It is fantastic. This is my first time having an enclosed server rack. It's the perfect height for me and it's the perfect depth for me. And I love that I could get this in a gray color because this gray server rack will go great in my white server room. <laughs> so I think it'll look really great. A lot of great features on this, obviously on casters. It has this glass panel that I'm super stoked about because I can see right in and see my servers. Standard way of racking my servers, I get up to 32U. I have this temperature controlled unit on top that will kick on if it gets too warm inside and I can keep it off. And while it's off, I have these perforated edges to pull in air and passively cool this rack. And the benefit of having it enclosed is it won't be as loud. Not that my servers are that loud right now. You might be able to hear them if you listen closely. They're right over there. Uh, but putting them inside of here will kind of dampen that sound a little bit more. And I love these side panels. I love that I can just get into the server rack right from the side if I need to or the back. Super, super duper convenient. That was one of the reasons why I hesitated a little bit on an enclosed rack versus an open frame. On an open frame, you don't have any panels and you can run wires and do anything you like. You can work on your server from the side, underneath, from the bottom, from the top, uh, and there's nothing obstructing your way. And so the fact that this has removable panels is awesome. Game changer for me because now I don't have those concerns about what if I need to run some cables while I have this full of servers. As you can see, there's nothing in the server rack that's coming soon. Now that I have a server rack, I can put my equipment into it. That's part of the next phase is tearing down my old SysRacks open frame server and putting them in here. So I've got lots of goodies coming, some new hardware that's gonna go in here. It's actually sitting right over there, but stuff you haven't seen before that I'm gonna put in this rack and make it super duper nice. I can't wait. And a huge thank you to SysRacks for sending this rack to me. It's exactly what I wanted. I couldn't imagine a better server for my needs. And if you're looking for a server, either for a small business or for your home, you should check out SysRacks. They have lots of different racks, whether it be enclosed, tall ones, 32U, 42U, and down to short ones too, that I'm thinking about getting for my office. But they have a server rack for almost every need, whether you're a small business, large enterprise, or someone at home like me. And as you can see, the build quality is great, so you should totally, totally check them out. And also, huge thanks to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Uh, enough with the chit chat. Let's see your rack. Oh, I, I, I mean, right now it's it's in pieces. In, in the basement, I have lights set up. My next video, you're gonna see like my basement, and it's gonna seem kind of like a creepy basement, because <laughs> I have no other way to do this. I can't build this server rack inside of the server room because there's a rack in there. You know, the quote unquote grow, grow room isn't big enough for two racks.